Welcome back to the second issue of the day. The House of Representatives has rejected a bill that set age limits for the top public positions in the country. The bill was sponsored by a People's Democratic Party's uh, lawmaker from Imo State, Bid A.K. According to the bill proposed, the maximum age for offices of the president and vice president was put at 70 years and 35 years as minimum for governor, deputy governor, and senators. The highest age is 65 years, while the House of Representatives and House of Assembly is 60 years and 50 years, respectively, and a minimum of 12 years. In addition, the bill also fixed the lowest ages for persons contesting elections into the Senate at 30. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Miller, stated that if the bill is passed into law, some lawmakers in the House will have no chance in the 2023 general elections. Joining us to look at uh, the dynamics around this uh, proposal, we have Mr. Femi Osasono, who is a public affairs analyst. And also joining us is uh, Reverend Dapo Daramola, a political analyst. Good evening, gentlemen. Wonderful evening to you. Yeah, uh, good to have you. Uh, uh, let me start with Mr. Femi. Um, do you think uh, this bill makes a lot of sense, or or you think it's going to be dead on arrival? Looking at what is playing out in the house. All right. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to be on your platform. Yeah. Well, to me. I think it's a good bill. Yes, it's a good bill, even though uh, it, it was not supported by a lot of the um, National Assembly members, which uh, um, I think that's exactly what I expected that will happen. Because when you look at the age bracket of a lot of the National Assembly members, you, you, I'm sure you don't want them to shoot themselves on their, on their, on their legs. Yeah, so uh, it's a good bill, uh, but at the same time, I, I, I think I, I may want to look at this from a different point of view. Personally, I think it's a good bill, but at the same time, I feel that um, our problem in this country is really not the numerical figure of uh, the political class or the member of the National Assembly, the president, and vis-a-vis. -vis. I do not think it's the numerical, I mean, the numerical figure is a, is a problem. Because uh, if you look at, hello, can you hear me? Very well, very well. Yes. So, like I was saying, because if you look at a couple of countries, you know, uh, that Nigeria is actually looking up to, I mean, I don't think age is really an issue in some of these countries. Okay. I mean, what are we even talking, talking about? Joe Biden, the newly elected president of the United States, is 78 years old. Okay. I know, I know you are going to come to that, Femi, but we'll come back, yeah. to, we'll come back to that conversation. But let's, let's look at, uh, let's build from what you've uh, started. Uh, Mr. Dr. Daramola, I, I, I see Femi explaining that... Um, even if we look at the minimum age as currently operated in our constitution, why should there be a limit to someone to occupy a public office in terms of the maximum age? And to a large extent, I think that was, that was what the uh, not too young to run deal, you know, which was signed into law by President Bamadou Boy. That was what it was meant to address. And of course, you know, uh, it shows that age limits or putting limits to the age of those who have the desire to serve uh, it should not be something that we should be thinking about anymore. You cannot put a cap on, you know, because people's interest cannot be, cannot be, uh, is not subjected to other people's interpretation in terms of when they are fit to run and when they are not fit to run. I mean, as long as you are mentally, you have the mental capacity to run, as long as you have the basic, you know, um, the basic education, we call it educational qualification, even that also became an issue. Because, you know, um, 
people look at the fact that, okay, initially some people felt, okay, we, we have school science as, as, you know, the benchmark. And they felt that, oh, no, why must our leaders, you know, school size was too, was too low, that we should move to first degrees and all of this and all of that. So over time, anyway, none of this, whether it is the first degree or the second degree of people of being a professor, or whether you are, you are old or you are young, people in the offices are still not proving to us that, you know, in the age that you get into office matter. Because what we care about, what Nigeria has cared about is performance. If an 80 year old man walks into that office and is able to perform magic, I can tell you a lot of people will not remember his age. What people will remember him for will be his performance in office, his capacity to deliver on the on the dividends of the Mr. Daramola, Mr. Daramola, yes. let, let me interject quickly. Um, I remember one of the statements that uh, President Muhammadu Buhari uh, said sometimes, I think during his first tenure, was that I wish you were younger and uh, he could have done more than what he's currently doing, which tells us that he wishes he had more energy to do a whole lot of things. Can't we, I, I think there is something that is necessitating, I mean, I mean, that is making us come up with this kind of idea. Uh, while it's not common, while it's not popular, some people also cited the issue of civil service, oh, don't we have retirement age? Why shouldn't we also have it for political office so that we can have some kind of, you know, cap in terms of age? How potent is that argument? Dr. Why, why, is, why is that not applicable to public office? No, that is different because public office is tenure. You can't go beyond for you can't go beyond the eight years, two times. But in civil service, you, have, you must have gone for either 35 years in or service, years, yeah. or you clock the age of 60. 60 that, yeah. that, that is the difference. But in public service, the moment you serve your first time or second time as, pre as president or as governor, I mean, that, it, it ends there. So that, that is different. And for me, many of these chief executive positions, whether you like it or not, are not, you know, uh, they are not for sprint race or marathon. It is, you already have a cabinet of 36 people who are going to work as ministers. You have a residue of special advisors and senior special advisors. You are not the one, you are, you are only heading a government. You are just a head of a government. You are just at the head of, 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 of a group of people who are meant to serve the people and think for you. People are thinking for you. That is the rough mind. You have a vice president, you have 36 you know, ministers, who are meant to, you just have, I mean, you have people in terms okay. of policy development. So all you need to do is to, we want you to, to be a leader. A leader is to run up and down. So if the age is not an issue. The okay. leader is to put, you know, uh, to keep a sense of direction. So yeah, for me, I don't, I don't think that, you know, when we put too much in the office of the president, and we tell because he said, the man said that uh, if he was younger, what will he do differently? Is, are you saying that his brain is out there, that he, he doesn't have what it takes to, to think and to look at what is good and what is bad for the people? Okay. If the policy is bad for the people, the man should know. Okay, like your position is clear. Your position is clear, Dr. Paul. Let me go back to Femi. Femi, you know, if you look at what the speaker said, I, I may be worried that it's really about them and not really the overall interest of Nigerians. Or is there more to what the speaker meant that if we do that, some of you here may not come back after this tenure, I mean, after this, uh, 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 this administration. What do you think? Yeah, thank you very much for the question. Well, uh, the speaker has a point. Have you checked the age bracket of majority of our National Assembly members? I think the highest age bracket is between 50 to 65. So if you are putting a cap, on the age limit of the National Assembly members at 65. So definitely, a lot of these National Assembly members are not going to be able to come back for the next and all. And like it or leave it, a lot of people, a lot of politicians, to them, they see National Assembly as a retirement sport. That's why we have quite a number of um, governors, 
ministers in the in the National Assembly. So there is no way the the uh, the speaker is going to be able to say specifically and say that okay, we have to uh, we have to put this cap at 65 because definitely, like he rightly said, a lot of them will not be able to come back for the next term. And let me add it to you: a lot of these guys, if we decide to dig deep, you will even discover that most of them are not using the right age. <laughs> to be honest with you but even the age that was given the political age so to speak <laughs> is already is already very close to, to, the to, to the age limit we are talking about so there is no way in this world that you will have same set of people that are going to pass this particular uh, okay. bill and these are the same set of people that would be affected by the bill so it's more like asking them to, it's more like you're giving them a, a gun and a bullet to shoot themselves on the leg. Okay. It's a, yeah, it's going to be knock off. Definitely. You're, you're, you're repeating that again. I'll come back to you for your final comment. But let me quickly go back to uh, Dr. Paul Daramola. In closing, uh, what strategy do you think we can use in addition to what is currently obtainable in our constitution to get the best of the best? We've talked about the issue of O-level as being too low for us to have a president. We've talked about um, um, some other factors. The age has been further reduced from not too young to run Bill. What other things do you think can throw up the smart kind of leaders that some of these young people are expecting? You see, the problem is that we have just advancing um, ideas, I mean, suggestions which can, that can help. You know, uh, it's in order. But my, my worry, my biggest worry is that even the quite, those, those of them who are there, who are quite young, either in their 40s, you know, some in their late 30s, I mean, I know some, I remember there was one that was born in 1977 that was representing the South Southern, you know, um, constituency, you know, in Nakwaibo. I mean, as at the time he was there. So when you look back, there are quite, a young, uh, quite, quite young people there. But the question is, you see, people are not, the reason why people are, are, not, are not too bothered about the age anymore is that what have they done to impact their, their constituency? You know, and, you know, those, that, that's the problem. So, and in an environment where even older people, too, are failing, and even the younger ones are failing. So the question is, at what age can we then say we, we find bright ideas that can move our country forward? I mean, look at the speaker today. He, I'm sure he's in the 50s. Were, we have some laws who are in their late, early 50s and all of that. You know, and you ask yourself, how has that impacted or transformed, you know, those states or those, or those you know, local governments and all of that, and even the constituency and senatorial, you know, areas which are representing? So that is my worry. But for me, I feel the National Assembly, the biggest issue with the National Assembly is that we must we must reduce the the amount of money. So it's, it's too juicy. And, and for me, and yes, what, what are they turning out in terms of positive ideas to move this country forward? Okay. So while the age is an issue, I think there are other aspects we need to look at at some other time. Should be the uh, especially as they affect the, the national okay. assembly. Thank you, you so know, much. That, that's my biggest worry. Because most well, of the world leaders that we have to say, what, making impact. Even people I, like even the Indian Prime Minister is 70, 70 years old. Okay, I Dr. Daramola, your, your points are quite valid. Your worry is quite valid. And uh, let's so hope that the conversation will continue. But on a final note, I also want you to react to that last question. What kind of uh, um, criteria do you think we need to push? to have the best of the best among us. That's okay. uh, Femi. Yes, okay. So, to be honest with you, eh, just to round this up quickly, I'll say this to you. A person can be very visionless, uninspiring, and unthinking at any age. You can have an unthinking, uninspiring 40 years old. Likewise, you can have a very thinking and more than 70 years old. What essentially we need in this country, to be honest with you, left to me, 
age is not an issue with our politicians. Okay. The major thing I think we should focus on is to look for politicians that are with discipline, character, commitment, and even sincerity towards social, economic, and human capital development of this country. We have our politicians can lie. There is no sincerity to the citizens. This, from, right from opening of their mouth, you know they're lying. You know they don't have any plan. Okay, Femi. You know they don't have anything to offer. Femi, I, I, yeah. I, I wish we could use a lie detector during the campaign, but thank you for your time. We will have to call it a wrap on this discussion. Thank you once again, Femi Osasono, who is our public affairs commentator. Much. And uh, Reverend Dr. Daramola, thank you for your insight on this issue. Always we quite appreciate it. Always my pleasure. Thank you very much. And to our viewers, let's quickly take a short breather. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take on the state of our, ins on the state of our security. Let me not call it insecurity. Please don't go anywhere. Here is my take on the disturbing video. Another disturbing trend in information dissemination. The military asks us to discredit Boko Haram, claiming responsibility. And now the terrorists have released a video allegedly confirming the custody of the schoolboys. As always advised, we will not glorify the activities of the insurgents, but we earnestly desire a prompt action and intelligent surveillance to have these boys back home. And like one of my guests said, or my guest in this discussion, he said maybe before the end of today, we might have these boys back. And that is our NS expectation, and we'll expect the relevant authorities to do the needful. And that's my take on this issue tonight. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, tomorrow, that's uh, at 7 p.m., where we'll have another interesting discussions. Till then, I am Coyote Ladende, saying bye for now.